This program is proudly brought to you by Puma Energy and proudly supported by BSB, official sponsor of the 2015 Pacific Games. And New Guinea, exclusive carrier for the 2015 Pacific Games. And Coral Sea Hotels, preferred accommodation provider of the 2015 Pacific Games. And welcome to Road to Port Moresby 2015. Now today marks 101 days till the opening of the 2015 Pacific Games and athletes are now at the crucial stages of preparations. In this first segment, Dion Combank speaks to the more of their siblings. Robin and Sheila grew up playing tennis, but with the guidance of mentor, mother figure and aunt, former PNG rep Marion Genia, they both developed a passion for squash. Robin is one of PNG's up-and-coming squash athletes and Sheila represented Papua New Guinea at the 2014 Glasgow Commonwealth Games. This is their story. Sport has always been a part of the Morove siblings Sheila and Robin's life. They both started playing tennis early in their childhood. About four years. Actually, my parents and my late aunt, who used to play squash in the past. Because my family was more into squash than tennis, so I moved along with the family. I just played a sport for fun, yeah. I used to play tennis and then I just played it for fun and then somehow I just liked it and then I switched over to, tennis, uh, to squash and also because um, at the time, we had um, Naluke guy and like the top players like Derek Hunter. So we get to go down and watch them and that, you know, that really inspired me to play, especially like when I saw Naluke play and I was like, yeah, I want to be like here one day. <laughs> um, I played for, I started playing squash in 2006. Yeah, so it's about eight years. Robin began playing tennis at the age of five then represented PNG in tennis as a junior in numerous international tournaments before making the transition into playing squash. Yeah, I represented PNG in tennis, traveling down to Fiji, Australia, and New Zealand. Uh, in Fiji was the Pacific Oceania Junior Champs, and in Australia was the Australian Junior Champs, same as New Zealand Oceania Junior Championships. Later, they both developed an interest for squash, which they began playing as a hobby. And with family playing squash, interest grew. They spent more time at the squash court, then began playing squash competitively. They recently represented NCD at the 6th BSP PNG Games in Ley, where they both finished on the podium, winning gold and silver in their respective events. Silver medal, and my sister got a gold medal. It was a good experience leading up as a practice towards the Pacific Games. It's a great feeling, yeah. I was so, oh my goodness, like every time you see, I mean, people go and get their medals and like, it's a really great feeling, yeah. And yeah, I went with my mom and dad and Robin and my sister. We, we made up the team and city, so yeah, I was so proud. Robin and Sheila represented PNG at the 2011 Numia Pacific Games, where Sheila just missed out on a bronze medal, finishing fourth. She later went on to compete at the Glasgow Commonwealth Games last year. It was a great experience for Sheila, as she got to see how squash is played at its highest level. I played, uh, I represented uh, first uh, in the SP Games 2011, and that was my first. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I finished fourth because I I went as far as the semi-final. Yeah. I played against um, 
Nepal, they are number four seed and number one. Yeah, and I did lose to their number one, so. Oh, okay. But then I was, then I played for bronze, but then I lost, yeah. Oh, okay. But it was a great experience and an exposure as well, yeah. I've played, I've played in the Arrow Games in 2011, and then I got to play in the 2011 SP Games in New Caledonia. And 2014 um, Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. I I went. I played against the number two seed, and I I won in five. So that was yeah. I was so happy, and that at least I get to beat New Caledonia number two. And then when I got to play the number one, and I lost, but I think that was my best achievement. Family has always played an important part in their sporting career, always providing them with the support they need in their interest for the sport of squash. A huge supporter of both Sheila and Robin was their late aunt, Marion Genia. They both want to do well in the upcoming Pacific Games and dedicated to their late aunt. I mean, she's the one who got me into squash. I always watch her and she would ask me to go down and have a few hits. So because of that, it's like, because she introduced the sport to me, I like dedicate back to her. I mean, she's the only one that comes and supports us and scream, yeah, go Robin, go Sheila, and at least, you know, we get to see her, the only person. I mean, apart from that, yeah, my mom and dad, obviously. This year at the 2015 Pacific Games, Robin and Sheila will take the squash court for Papua New Guinea. They have been training hard over the last three months following their performance at the PNG Games and are excited to represent their country in front of a home crowd. The Pacific Games will see the best from the Oceania Pacific region to compete for the gold medal. Strong competition will come from the New Caledonians who dominated squash at the 2011 Pacific Games. After the break, we chat to members of the host broadcast and commentary team, as well as the launching of ticket sales here in Port Moresby. Recently, I was joined by three gentlemen on the set of Road to Port Moresby, Brendan Telfer, a world-renowned commentator, who has a wealth of experience with the Pacific Games and will be leading the commentary team, as well as Martin Perry, production manager of the host broadcast, and Mark Ella from the National Indigenous Television. Joining me on Road to Port Moresby is Mark Ella, Brendan Telfer and Martin Perry. Now, gentlemen, welcome to the show. Can you tell us a bit about your visit here to Port Moresby? Well, I'm probably uh, the odd one out because I'm coming back. Uh, I don't think these guys have been here before and it's my great pleasure to be back here in Port Moresby. I'm working with the host broadcaster team. Martin here, of course, is coordinating the technical broadcast, the images that the Pacific and the world is going to see in about 100 days from now. My job is to work with the broadcasters, the commentators, to tell the story, the great story about Papua New Guinea, the gold medals for Papua New Guinea, and how the country performs at this very important occasion. Uh, I can go on, and I probably will. Martin's here coordinating, and of course, um, the great Margella, who we're very proud and very honored to have here with us as well. Now, Brendan, you've, as mentioned, um, you've covered previous Pacific Games. Okay. What makes the Games here in Port Moresby different, in your opinion? Um, it's the culture, it's the people, it's Papua New Guinea, and you've got an incredible story to tell. And I'm really looking forward to working with you guys to tell that story, uh, to reveal to the world the great mystery of Papua New Guinea for many people in Australia. And it's fantastic through NITV now that we've got Mark and his crew up here so that eyes in Australia all over Australia will be seeing Papua New Guinea this time, also in New Zealand as well. It's just absolutely brilliant. I was here in 1991. It was a time, a pivotal time for Papua New Guinea. It was very young. It was only, what, 15 years old. And it just emerged. You know, the Kumul stirred. And what I want to see this time is the Kumul roaring, because I really do think um, it's going to be a great masterpiece for Papua New Guinea. And hopefully it's sort of can define 
uh, where the game should be at going, going forward. It's going to be very, very exciting and I'm absolutely wrapped to be back here again. It is very thrilling. Now obviously the 1991 games would have been totally different to the games that will be hosted here this time around. Yeah. Um, while the venues are still being um, constructed and are yet to complete, be completed, sorry, what do you think of um, the venues now compared to the venues back then? Well, a few weeks ago, of course, we endured a little bit of a rainstorm across Moresby. Uh, I'm sure that after all that rain, things are going to look very green when it comes around. I mean, they're sensational. They're state of the art. They look absolutely wondrous. Um, and I guess there's going to be a sense of nostalgia for me as well because at uh, the big stadium, of course, we saw the emergence. And again, we've got a few moments, so maybe I can indulge myself. Um, we saw some incredible performances from Papua New Guinea. The first time ever really that I think Papua New Guinea emerged in the Pacific Games back in 1991. Um, you know, Takale Tuna, uh, Subobabo, Watavo, uh, Iamo Launa. Um, an incredible performance and all of a sudden, uh, you know, PNG announced to the world that it had arrived. So hopefully, what, 24, 25 years later, this is where PNG consolidates and says, guys, we are serious, we are a player and uh, we're here to play fair, but we'll take you on. But I'm very interested to see what the medal hall is gonna be looking like at the end of those uh, of, of the games. It's gonna be exciting. Now on that note of medals, you did mention Takala Tuna, Subul yep. Babo, Yamalana. Yep. Now the most recent and previous Commonwealth Games, we had two gold medals, um, Dikatoa, Stephen Curry, sure. and now we do have uh, people like Nelson Stone, Toya yes. Whistle Running. Um, you know, comparing the talent to 1991, you know, in your opinion, yeah, it, how, how, how well, has it grown? Well, I think your development work has been very clever and uh, very targeted. And I think it's going to produce some great champions, some new champions that we're going to have to get to know and probably get to love very much over the next uh, few weeks or years or whatever it is. So, yes, you mentioned some very talented younger athletes coming through. And this, I think, is an opportunity for them to shine. I mean, 91, it was a pivotal Games. It was a huge Games. And hopefully you'll be able to match it and some. Um, come this July. Definitely. Now you speak of your commentating skills. How big is your team? Because we have over eight venues, 28 yeah. sports as um, you know. You spoke of skills. <laughs> I do my best. Um, we, we have a, a group, a very talented group that's going to be drawn from the Pacific and uh, we've got eight regulars that we're going to be working through and Martin and I will be sitting down in coming weeks to, to thrash out those final details. But believe me, Martin brings a huge amount of experience to us as the host broadcaster and what you see uh, will be world class. It's really going to be a great game. So I'm thrilled to be working with Martin and also of course the great man down here to my right who will be helping us with our football commentary as well. We've got uh, a couple of very good days of football in the middle of the games and I'm delighted that Mark is going to give us some time to be working with us as well. It's going to be Believe me, it's going to be sensational. You're going to love this. Now, Martin, um, this is your last visit to Port Moresby, I believe, before the Games. Um, if you can just give us an update on the preparation stages for the host broadcast team. Well, we've been building. I mean, I didn't tell Brendan, but I did sneak in about six months ago. He didn't see. Um, and I started the process then. But uh, it, everything has progressed. We're now getting down to the real nuts and bolts of, of filling in the final sort of names on staff lists and what have you. Um, we've got our 10, possibly 11 mobile units secure so we can do multiple live feeds still from the different venues, bringing it all back to the IBC um, venue and, and turning around a real high quality set of programs from there. Um, and now we're at the, it feels real actually now. I mean, it's, it's, it's very strange being back in the UK and uh, picking up emails and trying to stay in touch as best I can. But it's actually coming here and feeling the buzz and seeing all the people working on it and putting in such long hours to make it work and to make it a success. And you really, just by being here, it just feels real. And we can make huge strides over the next, uh, what is it, 100 odd days up until the Games and make sure we're ready to go. Now, Chief Executive Officer of the Games Organising Committee, Peter Stewart, uh, made mention that this specific Games will be the first time that um, we will broadcast through, that one of the rights holders, sorry, will broadcast through high definition. What are your thoughts on that? In terms of, in terms of it being high definition, yep. I, th I think it's great. I mean, it, you know, high definition showcases sport to a, to a degree that you know people couldn't have conceived 15, 10, 15 years ago, um, and and that's what we want to do. You know, we want to show 
the sport in all its glory and all its messing the lot you know the whole story of sport is fantastic and television plays a huge part obviously in telling that story and that's what we want to capture now, from my understanding the host broadcast will be doing um, multilateral coverage can you expand further on that yeah I mean it's a, it's a really complex infrastructure that we're having to create here so I mean, we went through a list actually with Brendan this morning and um, towards the end of the games in particular when it gets very busy we could have as many as seven live events going on simultaneously um, and obviously we don't want to miss a thing so we've had to build um, a system that can not just cope with the fact there are seven live games going on but we will be filming and recording at each of those venues where there is live sport going on capturing all the images back at the IBC uh, which is the central hub for the broadcast or for the world feeds that we're, we're putting out um, turning all those pictures around and, and sending you know what we think is going to be the best of the action out to the world. Now as we spoke about in um, our last chat on screen, you did, you know, we did talk about um, the wealth of experience that you have with World Cups, Olympics, Commonwealth Games, but the Pacific Games will be slightly different. What are the ch what are some of the challenges that you've identified? My, the cha I, th I think the challenge is getting across the real spirit and flavour of the games, and that's why it's great for me having someone like Brendan around because you know, with the best will in the world, being from Europe. I, I'm not, I have, I've not experienced it, but I want to make sure we cover all of that. And I, and I think it's, you know, it's not actually, it's not just the Pacific Games, multi-sports games have become huge events and more and more people want to see the colour and the flamboyance and the stories and the whole spirit behind it. And that's what we're determined to show from here. Now, while you're down in the UK, who do you liaise with back here in Papua New Guinea? Oh, my inbox is um, fuller than it's ever been. So um, there's a team of, there's the, the team at the Pacific Games Committee. Um, I'm in touch with Brendan regularly. Um, we, 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 I, it is, diff you know, it, it's obviously, it presents its challenges being away from here, but we do, we stay in touch. Now, Mark, welcome. You're You've welcome. been awfully Thank quiet. <laughs> I have been quiet, it's really good. That's listening right. to these yep. learned gentlemen speak. Your visit to Port Moresby, um, you're here for a couple of things. NITV um, is jumping on board to um, broadcast the games. If you can tell us a bit about that as well. Yeah, this is the first time that uh, the Pacific Games will be shown uh, in Australia, um, and I'm delighted that NITV has secured those rights. So obviously, we went free to wear uh, in December 2012. So we've got the potential to reach, you know, an audience of 12 million people right ac right across the country. Um, obviously, we've got an affiliation with the Pacific uh, and you know, Indigenous culture, and this is the first time that we've had that chance and uh, you know, we, we're entering, Australia is entering four teams um, into into the games. Uh, we're going to obviously cover a lot more than that, um, but it's, I guess, our first introduction uh, into the greater Pacific region and I'm pretty excited about it. Now, Brendan mentioned that you will be assisting with your, um, you know, commentating um, skills with Rugby Union. What else will you be assist, uh, assisting the host broadcast team with? Well, hopefully, obviously, Rugby Sevens, but also the, the Rugby Nines. Um, you know, I played a lot of Rugby League um, you know, prior to going on to Rugby Union. And, uh, you know, I guess somebody needs to run the water bottles, you know, to the cameraman. <laughs> you know, they're, they're pretty tired. So, you know, in between the Nines and the Sevens, you know, I'll be just helping out as much as I can. Now, apart from that, are there any other services that you will be providing at the Games? Oh, I don't know. It, 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 I guess it's up to these two Sweet. learned gentlemen. Um, uh, Brendan's obviously in charge of the, the commentary team. Um, hopefully I'll be part of that. Uh, if there's a sport that uh, he thinks that my unique talents uh, can assist, then I'm sure you'll he'll let me know. Now, how will your experience with NITV assist with um, the broadcasting of the Pacific Games? Well, apart uh, from, from the commentary, um, we need, well, we hope uh, we're going to show 90, 90 hours live on NITV uh, with the, with the uh, uh, packages, uh, probably up to 125 hours of television. So we want to actually promote the games uh, right to our audiences, obviously, but to the greater Australian community. So, you know, as much as I'll be, you know, cheering on and, and helping in the commentary, you know, I want, you know, as many Australians as possible to be aware of what's what's going on in terms of Pacific sport, but certainly then also promoting, you know, Papua New Guinea. 
Now, in your opinion, how do you feel about Australia jumping on board and being a part of the Pacific Games? Because this is the first time. It is the first time, uh, and, and I think the committee's done the right thing by allowing Australia to enter four teams. So we're not, obviously, as, as, as the biggest nation, so to speak, we're not going to take over the Games, and that's the last thing we want to do. But, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I think we're in uh, sevens, uh, sailing, uh, I think wrestling and taekwondo. So we're in uh, sports that are, that, are, that are obviously different sizes, um, um, and it's I guess the first step. Um, yeah, you know, depends how it goes and, and the success. I mean, that's up to the committee to make the, the final decisions. But uh, I'm delighted that uh, that Australia is invited uh, and that we can participate in in what will be a wonderful event. Well, gentlemen, those are all the questions I have. Is there anything else each of you would like to say? Well, um, on behalf of the commentary team, we can't wait. We're absolutely thrilled to be here. It's a great honour and a great privilege to be back in PNG and uh, bring on the games. Go for gold, PNG. Do your best. Have fun and spread the love and the spirit of this beautiful country around the world and around the region. It's going to be a great success. Well, thank you, and I look forward to working with the three of you. Thank you. Thank you. The 2015 Port Moresby Pacific Games will be the largest games ever held in the Pacific region with over 650,000 tickets available for the public. The pricing of tickets were confirmed after a number of considerations, the seating capacity of each venue, affordability and accessibility. This year's Games will be the largest Pacific Games in history. There will be 650,000 tickets on sale for over 28 sports spread across 14 venues, five of which will be free of charge throughout 16 days of competition. This will be the largest Pacific Games in history and the opportunity to be part of it is going to be provided to more people than has ever been provided in the past. These tickets provide you an opportunity to have an unforgettable experience. That experience will start from the time you get up in the morning, the travel to the venue, your involvement in the venue, the watching of the sport, the watching of the cultural performances, the watching of all the other things that are going to go on in that venue, the sharing the experience with your colleagues and your friends and your family, and then going home exhausted but exhilarated. This is an amazing experience and that's what this ticket offers you. The announcement of the ticketing packages and sales on the 17th of March marked a milestone in the lead-up to the 2015 Pacific Games. Minister for Sports National Events and the 2015 Pacific Games, Justin Chichenko, confirmed that the announcement of ticket sales proved that the country is one step further towards producing the Games. This is an exciting moment finally having the tickets on sale. So that gives you confidence that the venues will be ready as well because the tickets are on sale now. So it has to work together. It has to work together. So Chief right. Executive Officer of the Games Organising Committee, Peter Stewart, says the committee's objective was to find ways in which would assist and maximise the performance of athletes. The seating capacity of all 14 venues have been maximised to achieve this objective. The Sir Hubert Murray Stadium, as well as the Sir John Guy's Outdoor Stadium, will accommodate the highest number of spectators. The ticketing has been arranged to best suit all Papua New Guineans. There will be four categories. Ticket sales for the opening and closing ceremony, daily tickets, venue packages and sports packages. First of all, we've looked at ticket demand at each of the various venues and for the sports. We've considered the seating capacity at each of the venues. And while we have some very large venues, there are some venues where it's a little bit more difficult to get a, a ticket, so those are slightly different premium pricing. The strength of the schedule, and believe me, the amount of work that goes into ensuring that the sports schedule provides every sport an opportunity for its moment in the sunshine, and for the greatest opportunity for people to be able to actually watch the quality athletes that we've got coming and visiting us. Past win-loss record, particularly of PNG, 
and which sports are going to be most favoured from that point of view. We've compared prices with other sporting events both around the world but also here in PNG and other activities that are based around entertainment. Stewart also confirmed that 85% of all tickets will be available to the public, average price being 13 kina. So we have packages that are both affordable, readily available, but will give incredible value for money. So how do you buy your ticket? There's a ticket information guide, because we've got a number of packages. You don't have to memorise it all from today. Those, package, those uh, information guides will be available at selected BSP outlets and also on our website. There's an order form that you would need to fill in when you go to the BSP outlet. You fill in that order form, you take it up to the teller and you pay for those tickets. And at the selected BSP outlets, you will be able to buy tickets quickly and easily for wherever you want to uh, go. So, where do you actually go to get those tickets? Selected BSP branches, which we'll announce, uh, and then very soon we'll be announcing five additional outlets in Port Moresby, which will also be where you'll be able to buy merchandise in mid-April. And I would encourage everybody to get in quick, because certainly there will be a big run on these tickets. They're incredibly affordable, they give fabulous value, and they will give you an experience that you will never, ever be able to replicate. This brings us to the end of tonight's episode. If you would like to view this episode again, visit the MTV website and like us on Facebook for instantaneous updates and news bites on the Pacific Games and for news on our neighbouring countries' preparations. Thank you for joining me on Road to Port Moresby 2015. Good night. was proudly brought to you by Puma Energy and proudly supported by BSB, official sponsor of the 2015 Pacific Games. And New Guinea, exclusive carrier for the 2015 Pacific Games. And Coral Sea Hotels, preferred accommodation provider of the 2015 Pacific Games.